Hey y'all, it's Nick from Undefeated Productions, and welcome back to The 3-2 Pitch, our podcast where me and Drew go out and talk about things around the world of baseball. And I know, elephants out of the bag, whatever you're supposed to say, MLB baseball is finally back, man. It is. I am just stoked. Uh, we just decided, oh yeah, we're going to get on, you know, first things. There's been a bunch of moves. We're talking about basically all the moves in the offseason, talk about baseball being back, the collective barring agreement, and also have a show coming out on Thursday when hopefully a lot of this uh, stuff settles down before spring training games and actually like give an outlook on divisions and where teams are going to be. First off, Drew, how are you, man? It's been a while. It's been great, man. And like, like you said, Nick, you know, it's great that baseball's back. Uh, it was a, it was a long road back this year. I wasn't sure they were going to get it done. It, uh, Austin Slater, one of the union rep for the giants the other day was actually saying that it was grim that they weren't sure they were even going to get a deal done. Um, and it, that if it didn't get done by the end of last week, that they weren't sure if there was going to be a season or it may have been, you know, delayed another, you know, maybe another few weeks or even another month. So I'm happy about it. You know, I, I'm happy because I have a great team. Uh, you know, I, I think they're, they're, the Giants aren't going to be as big of a surprise this year, obviously, as they were last year. But um, man, so far, they have really addressed some of the needs in their pitching staff. And, uh, you know, I think that as we get into the collective bargaining, bargaining agreement, I think a lot of a lot of National League teams are actually going to be happy because of the DH. I think it uh, I think that they may have they may have been a little bit down on the idea to start. But now, once they realize that they're going to have nine like legit hitters in their lineup, I think they're going to be pretty happy. Yeah, for sure. And we're already seeing one of those teams in the Nationals go out and sign Nelson Cruz just now. I mean, crazy. We'll talk about that later on. But yeah, the MLB lockout, the owners, you know, uh, December 1st or December 2nd, we're like, you know what? No deal. We're going to lock out the players. Nothing could happen between the uh, owners and the players. They couldn't use facilities, couldn't talk to trainers, couldn't talk to staff. The agents and uh, ownership could not talk to each other. So they're just locked out. No communication between both sides. And I mean, if this stat doesn't say it enough, the MLB lockout lasted 99 days. That was longer than Tom Brady's 34 day retirement. Yeah. Who, who unretired today. <laughs> who also decided to unretire in the midst of all of this craziness. But, you know, th this new collective bargaining agreement, we'll go over it quickly here. New CBA covers the 2022 to 2026 season. So it'll expire uh, on December 1st of 2026. And it covers a handful of things like an increase to the uh, luxury tax of 230 million that will rise to 244 million. The fourth tier Steve Cohen tax, which is a big thing. He is uh, openly was just like, oh, you know, I don't care about that. It's better. He's, he said it's better than having a bridge named after you. Yeah, I know there's a name for it. They call it, you know, the Cohen tax, you know, whatever. That's what Nimmo called it. You know, that's what Nimmo called it. You know, the way I describe it, it's better than a bridge being named after you or something like that. So um, they have a new $50 million pool for players who have not yet reached uh, salary arbitration. And uh, that'll be divided uh, with a bunch of things. Infographic on the, on the screen right now, showing you what each tier of like Cy Young, Rookie of the Year, MVP, all that stuff will bonus you. The minimum salary jumped to $700,000 and it'll grow up to $780,000. Uh, you mentioned a bunch of different things like rules, universal DH. Uh, they have, now there's this uh, implementation where MLB can send uh, rules like bigger bases and stuff to uh, to a, a group, a committee of players, of current players, past players, and elected representatives to actually vote on it. And then it doesn't have to be implemented in a, a year in advance. Um, and a bunch of other things, including a big thing, a 12 team postseason, yes. which is new. And I know first off, first, first thing thinking about it, 12 teams, you know, that's, that's a lot of teams, you know, six teams from each uh, league. So that's two more than normal. But when you think about it, eventually we know baseball is going to expand to 32 teams, 34 teams. That number will eventually, it'll kind of shrink and it'll, you know, eventually play out, play a, each other out and balance itself out. Um, just some grievances dropped. Uh, and overall that's, you know, highlighting the big thing. Oh, and then finally they did, uh, uh, agree until a July 25th deadline, I believe, for international draft. If they agree upon that, 
the um, uh, quality uh, qualifying offer will be dropped. Draft compensation will be dropped. So Drew, do you want to just have, do you have any thoughts on all this stuff? Yeah. The one that you forgot, uh, well, that you didn't mention is that they also dropped this runner at second in extra innings, which was just a complete joke to me. I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. It reminded me of slow pitch softball when they put a, a, a runner out there at second and then, uh, I know they didn't do it in the postseason, but it still, to me, was a huge um, kind of issue during the regular season. And then they they also dropped the seven inning double headers, which um, I I'm I was not a fan of. I didn't think that it was fair for teams when they had to play in those games, especially uh, if their rotations weren't maybe in line and uh, another team basically could just kind of get through a game a lot easier than they could based on the kind of where they were in the rotation. So I. I didn't love that rule either, and I'm glad they got rid of that. But but just overall, I'm, I'm I, I will say this: I don't know if it was the best deal for the players. Um, I I heard a lot of comments from players, uh, including Brandon Crawford, who of course I follow, who said, "You know what? It wasn't the best deal, but it was good enough." Uh, so of course that leads me to believe that in four years there probably will be you know another. Uh, rigorous negotiation between the players and the union. Uh, I'm sorry, between the players union and the owners, but at least they got it done. Uh, no games missed, which is great. 162 games will be played. Uh, I feel sorry for those that had plans to go to spring training earlier, uh, but there will be a, a kind of a shortened spring training that will start next week. So that's exciting. That's why we will be previewing all of the divisions and the 12 team playoff, which will again have more opportunities. Uh, the, the 12 team playoff to me though, will, uh, will change the game and what you're going to see. And we've seen this actually since the, um, the beginnings of the um, extra wildcard team is that you're going to see more surprise world series winners. You're going to see teams that come out of nowhere, kind of like the Braves did last year. Uh, you know, we weren't expecting the Braves to win the World Series. I don't think either of us were. Uh, but you're going to see more teams that have an opportunity to win a World Series. And because of that expansion and because of the shortened series that you see, especially at the beginning of the postseason, uh, there's the possibility for a team like the Blue Jays, who I'm high on, uh, to get hot and just steamroll teams and uh teams that have higher payrolls, although the Blue Jays probably are one of the higher payroll teams in the league. But uh, don't be surprised to see a team like the Detroit Tigers, a team like the um, New York Mets, who I don't know if people are high on or not, but, uh, you know, it's, it's most likely not going to be your powerhouse team that wins the World Series anymore. And that's something that fans and um, the league is going to have to get used to. And it's going to be a kind of a side effect of the uh, expanded postseason. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, Blue Jays, higher payroll teams. Their current payroll is uh, sl slated at $171 million. So um, they're just average. They have a really good starting rotation, of course, went out and got the lights of Kevin, Kevin Gosman, Yusei Kikuchi, signed uh, Jose Barrios to a, a solid extension. You got the youngsters of... Uh, Vladdy and uh, uh, Bo Bichette and, uh, and many other people got George Springer last offseason. But yeah, I mean, the 12 team postseason, it's going to shake up a lot of things. Of course, the Mets are sitting at a payroll of $285 million, $5 million away from the Steve Cohen tax. Man, you know, and you mentioned players. I think a lot of the hesitation was with that tech, the fourth tax special and limiting spending. And so far, Steve Cohen also in today's report went out and said, you know, he's fine with going past uh, that threshold. So, you know, the Steve Cohen tax really is to only probably impact ever the uh, Dodgers and Mets, you know, that, he, that it seems not like it's going to be that big of a deal so far, but I'm just happy both sides got to an agreement and we can finally play baseball and we have free agent acquisitions back again. So first off, we're going to go through highlight, you know, a handful of free agents assigned with a, a numerous number of places. So, you know, we can uh, switch off here and uh, basically starting off with some bigger names like Javier Baez going to the Detroit Tigers. Yeah, well, that that's why I mentioned Detroit. Um, they're they're a team that's up and coming. They were a team, a team that went through a rebuilding process. 
They still have Miguel Cabrera, which is unbelievable. I mean, how he must be, he's got to be at least 40 by now, but uh, you know, you, you start, you start seeing teams like the Tigers that, you know, they, they year, a few years ago, you know, even five years ago were very competitive. And then unfortunately, you know, for various reasons, whether it be injuries or players that had to be released or, players that just didn't live up to their contracts like Prince Fielder or guys that just kind of just kind of fell off the map. Uh, but now you see, oh my goodness, they are they are young, they are exciting. And then to add someone like Javi Baez, who, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they went out and got Carlos Correa, you know, I mean, they're they're in that type of, you know, spending mode right now. And they know that they can uh, compete in a division that is not a powerhouse division. As we saw last year, the Twins dropped off. The Indians kind of stayed where they were. The Royals are also a bit of an upcoming team. So we're not talking about a strong division here. The White Sox are the White Sox. They're still tough. I mean, they still have, you know, a, a pretty good rotation and a great young lineup. They've got a manager who's older than God himself, but uh, and Tony La Russa, who's starting to look like the Grim Reaper uh, every year that goes by. But uh, the Tigers are going to be legit this year. And I wouldn't be surprised with that extra uh, wildcard spot that they can do some damage. Yeah. I mean, uh, two teams, uh, two teams from each division will make the playoffs. I believe that's the format. We didn't, don't have any clarity whatsoever. Um, and, you know, Javi Baez, I wanted the Mets to re-sign him. He had such a strong second half showing. And you mentioned the Tigers. They have the money to spend. Currently sitting at $135 million. Miguel Cabrera's owned, uh, owed $32 million this year. So, I mean, eventually when he comes out the books, you got a lot of money to spend. I know they'd be slightly hesitant towards one-year deals. Uh, but they also signed Eduardo Escobar and traded for Tucker Barnhart. And I believe brought back Jonathan Scope this offseason. All big moves. Eduardo Escobar, left-hand free agent from uh, Boston, really under the radar. Missed all the 2020, I believe, because he was held out with heart issues from uh, complications with COVID in 2021. Bounce back com- campaign, still not to the likes. He's going to be a solid. He's a low three, mid three ERA pitcher, uh, and I feel like in a in a pitcher's park, he's going to thrive in Detroit. Yeah, and then also finally with the Tigers, you mentioned Carlos Correa. Uh, we're going to talk about him in a minute after we get done talking about free agents and a little, you know, bump in the road. He might sign a one year deal. You know, that's something to look out for. We'll talk about that in a minute. Next up, we have the Giants. You know, they made a handful of moves and one of them uh, initially, this is your favorite team. They made a handful. They brought back Brandon Belt. He accepted the qualifying offer. Carlos Rodon. They just signed Carlos Martinez. They got a bunch of other dudes. What are your thoughts on, you know, the Giants in a whole and what they've done this offseason? Yeah, Rodon is a huge signing for them. Uh, fifth, la- I, believe, I believe fifth last year in Cy Young uh, voting in the AL um, on a great White Sox team. So they are legit. They're legit. And they're not only legit because of their starting rotation. Logan Webb, they, br- they brought bring back Anthony DiSclafani and Alex Wood. Uh, along with Radon, uh, but they have, but they have young pitchers in the wings. They have Tyler Beatty, and they have others that are ready to come up and make an impact. They also have a young rotation. Uh, I'm sorry, a young uh, bullpen, and uh, Camilo Duvall is an absolute beast. He is just. I don't think the National League realizes. <laughs> what they're going to be dealing with, dealing with, with this kid for the next 10 years. Uh, he's not only is he limber, he's athletic, but he is a bulldog out there and he's not afraid. And you can't tell me that that uh, experience that he had last year in the postseason isn't going to help him uh, against the Dodgers, even though he ended up ultimately giving up the game winning uh, hit to Cody Bellinger in the in game five. He was, uh, without them, they don't get to the point where they were. So uh, the, the Giants are going to be good, and they, uh, you know, they still have work to do. And I, I think Correa is an option there. And I, and I know that people may not feel that way, but I, I do believe that he's an option. I think Castellanos is probably more realistic. Uh, but the Giants have, have done a great job of 
kind of bringing back the guys who brought them to the dance last year. Because remember, Wood, Di Sclafani, and Webb, I mean, those were the three guys that really carried them, uh, you know, to get to where they were. And then as the season went on, they did, the offense kind of shut down. So they, they have more work to do, but they're, I don't think they're done yet. Yeah, they lost Buster Posey. I mean, but Logan Webb, man, he's such a stud. He's, he shut out the uh, Mets seven two third innings before Pete Alonzo went yak off of him. And Alonzo rockets one to left field. Back goes way near the wall. It's out of here. Pete Alonzo with a two-run homer to get the Mets back in it. Number 26 for Alonzo. And the Mets get on the board in the eighth, and they cut the Giants' lead to three to two on one big swing by Alonzo. Moving on to a handful of other signings um, on some not so much of old teams. CJ Crone resigned with the uh, Rockies two years, fourteen point five million dollars. Big imp- impact bat, along with Jose Iglesias. They signed uh, was also signed with the Rockies, along with a handful of other minor league players. Um, the Padres signed Luis Garcia to uh, two years, seven million dollars, a reliever for the Padres. Um, the Phillies, this is a fun one. <laughs> Phillies fans, I hope you guys enjoy. Round of applause. Thank you for taking Jerry's familiar to the Phillies. Oh, I hope you guys love him blowing games and the heart beating moments. So whenever you see him walk into a game, oh, your guys' problem now. Yimmy Garcia went to the Blue Jays. Uh, uh, here's a one and that I, I found funny. The Mets, you know, mo- the Mets, we'll talk about them towards the end. They made a lot of moves. I think the most notable name in the NL East so far to sign with, with the team is Avasayo Garcia signing with the Marlins. And this is a very, very underrated, the rate, under the radar move. I love Avasayo Garcia. He is going to go out there and he is going to hit you 25 home runs at a 280 average, play good D, Play good catch, as my coach always likes to say. I mean, he's a ball player. And I think this uh, Marlins team, they're looking for these guys that are going out and going to grind and be healthy. Avasio Garcia, Marlins fans, I think you are going to love him for the next four years. Great, great, great signing. And here's one that, you know, I think uh, we, we should highlight both of us. It kind of hurts both of us because I wanted him on the Mets and then you want him on the Giants. Kevin Gosman signing with uh, the Blue Jays for five years, $110 million. Yeah, I think that the Giants aren't, they they haven't been, especially in the Farhan Zaidi era, they haven't been in the business of long-term deals. Uh, They just, they don't believe in it. They don't believe in, um, you know, the stuff that Gausman had last year, which was great, don't get me wrong. And notice that I didn't mention Gausman uh, last about when I was talking about the team last year because he faded down the stretch. Uh, he was basically non-existent uh, in the postseason and ran out of gas. Um, you know, his slider was just not the same. His, uh, his stuff was just not the same. Uh, his splitter which is his really bread and butter was not the same down the stretch and it showed and he it took him a while to come out of it so kudos to the blue jays trying to solidify their starting rotation it's a good move for him personally you know he didn't have any he didn't owe anything to san francisco he 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 came to san francisco on a one-year deal or initially in this in the uh covid shortened season had a great year Backed it up last year for half the season and had a really rough back end after the all-star break. So kudos to the Blue Jays. I think, as we'll mention on Thursday, I think the Blue Jays are going to be really competitive. Uh, I I think the the Yankees and the Red Sox are going to come back down to earth a little bit this year. And I think that the Blue Jays have a real opportunity to compete for the division with the Rays. Yeah, the, they also signed someone else away from who was targeted by the Mets, uh, Yusei Kikuchi, uh, three yeah. years, $36 million. Um, another left-handed pitcher, again, the Blue Jays lost Robbie Ray. We'll talk about him in a moment, AL Cy Young Award winner. Um, just continuing going to, uh, down the uh, list, talk about the Rangers. They made a lot of moves. Andrew Heaney kicked off the offseason, signed with the Dodgers, one year, $8.5 million dollars. Slightly confusing. Uh, it's a lot of money for a guy with like a six ERA last year. So uh, I hope the Giants can actually like just explode all over Andrew Heaney. 
Oh, Rich, <laughs> Rich Hill signing with the Red Sox, $5 million. Great signing. I love Rich Hill on the Mets. I mean, like, I was just super excited to watch him pitch. I mean, something about Rich Hill just is amazing. Rysel Iglesias uh, re-signs with the Angels. I think that is a great, great move for the Angels, along with taking former Met, Noah Syn- two former Mets, Noah Syndergaard and Aaron Loop. Ugh. I mean, what can I say? Good, good riddance. Trust me on Syndergaard. Good riddance. I, I've been down on uh, Thor or whatever you want to call him. Captain, I don't know what, he, Captain whatever he calls himself. Uh, you know, uh, he, had, he had one or two good seasons. And, and, and that was about it. And, uh, you know, again, a, a guy that just couldn't uh, sustain that kind of stuff that you need. To, to be like a Jacob deGrom and, uh, you know, and even deGrom has had his issues, has had, you know, injury, has been injury prone. So, you know, good riddance to him. I, I think it's, I think it was good for the Mets to kind of just say goodbye and move on uh, instead of that negative kind of vibe that comes with a guy that's hanging on to an organization. So that, to me, that's actually a plus for the Mets. And he's going to go off to Anaheim where pitchers go to die <laughs> or, or players go to die. I don't know. I, I will say another under um, kind of an underrated signing for the Giants was Alex Cobb, who came over from the Angels also. So um, another really good move for them. So they have a pretty solidified starting rotation also. Yeah, I mean, Noah Syndergaard, I'm surprised you're, you say that because, I mean, I, I remember September 2nd of, I think, 2018, you were like, Man, this dude's the real deal. He's got some big quads. His legs must live in the. Yeah, because he was standing right in front of us. We were <laughs> we were literally watching him warm up right in front of me, and and the you know it's like nine I'm, inning I'm complete game shut out physical specimen uh, as my team was getting shut out. But I mean, that was then, and it, it didn't last. You know, it it it, it shows that he has potential but he has not been able to put it together consistently. And, and the one thing about the major leagues, which is anybody will tell you this, it doesn't matter what you do for one or two seasons. It's what you do for a, a five to 10 years. And, it, and if you have a short career, then that's kind of how you are remembered. That's kind of what your, you know, your legacy is as a major leaguer, which is, you know, you, you, were, you were pretty good you had a few good seasons, but you know, maybe you made, maybe you made a few all-star teams, but you really didn't uh, last. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I'm, I mean, no center. I'm salty about that. I think I'm more salty on Aaron loop, honestly, because I thought the Mets should really bring him back. I mean, he was an absolute stud, great walk up song uh, by Hardy, you know, for when he came into pitch, keep going down the list. Corey Kluber signed with the Rays. I think that'll be interesting. He's had a, a tough past couple of years, but again, the race, they just know something different with pitchers, man. You know, they just do something different. I hope they can get Corey Kluber back on the Cy Young pace that he was on with the Indians. Michael Lorenzen also signed with the Angels. Um, keep going down the list. Mark Melanson signed with the Diamondbacks. He stays in the NLS. Charlie Morton repacks the Braves. That was a big one-year, $20 million. I, I wish he went elsewhere, but, I mean, I guess I got to face him one more year. <laughs> James Paxson goes to the Red Sox. Uh, Robbie Ray, a big, big contract to go to the Mariners. I mean, this is reshaping the Mariners and their path. Oh, and, and we'll be talking about the Mariners a lot on Thursday. They are legit. Uh, they're, they're, and, and, if they don't, and if if they don't win multiple World Series championships in the next 10 years, I will be shocked. They, they, are, they are set up. The Blue Jays and the Mariners are set up to own the American League for the next 10 years. And I, and again, I will be shocked. And that's a lot coming from me because Seattle, the Seattle Mariners have been a long, for the, my entire life, have been the biggest choke artists in the history of Major League Baseball. Uh, they just, whenever they've had a great team, you know, they, they, they had the, arguably the best team in Major League history before you were born. I believe it was maybe the year you were born. It was uh, 2000, I think it was, was it 2001? I think it was 2001 when they won um, 100, I think they won 116 games. 
and of course got beat by the Yankees in the um, NLCS, ALCS because they were the Mariners. So, uh, you know, having said all that, huge signing for them. Robbie Ray is just going to be a perfect fit in that pitcher's ballpark. And they will continue to just thrive with young, athletic, and out and exciting players. Uh, and just a great end to the season last year for the Mariners, you know, even though they fell short. Uh, you could just see the energy of that city and the crowd coming coming together as they made that run all the way to the last day of the season. They fell a little short. But, man, the Blue Jays and the Mariners both had a run last year to finish the season, and I strongly believe that they will carry that momentum into this season. Yeah, I mean, I think the Robbie Ray signing indicates that they are ready to play and they have money to spend on, you know, some more free agents. You know, we're going to talk about that here in, I think, about less than three minutes. Um, but, you know, that's, again, Mariners, it's signifying they are ready to push push all the chips forward and try to do what they couldn't do in 2001. Also, uh, also a pair of signings for the Cubs, Marcus Stroman. He got out of New York on a three-year, $71 million deal along with Andrew Ken Simmons signing with the Cubs. Stroman, I mean, he's a head case, uh, good, good or bad, you know, wherever he goes, it's controversy for whatever reason. You know, he's always involved with the drama. Big city, New York, now the big city, Chicago. Like, I mean, he's a good pitcher, good player. Don't get me wrong, but you know, for that price and for what the Mets are trying to do right now, I don't think his, you know, vibe is the right thing. I'm happy he, you know, got paid somewhere else. Well-deserved. Uh, Chris Taylor re-signed with the Dodgers, uh, four years, $60 million. Um, Michael Walker went to the Red Sox. Have fun with him. He sucked with the Mets. Wainwright and uh, Molina re-signed with the Cardinals. Another big one that was kind of confusing the midst of the lockout, Justin Verlander off of Tommy John surgery, re-signs with the Astros, two years, $50 million deals. The final two teams that we got, we had left a handful of free agents. You probably notice, you know, we got the lights of some big names. First off, we got the Rangers and what they've done. They've brought in Cole Calhoun, John Gray, Martin Perez, Corey Seager, Marcus Semien, and a handful of other people, they, they brought in um, a cap, Mitch Garver for Isaiah Kiner Falefa and some other moves. Drew, the Rangers is yours, man. What do you what does this signify? It's not going to work. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, it's not going to work. It's just you don't. I, I've seen this. I've seen this show too many times. You know, I'm, I'm almost I'm turning 39 this year, move, moving up on 40. I'm getting old. And uh, I've been watching baseball since I was maybe four years old. And I've seen this show too many times. I've seen the same episode over and over again when a team that is kind of, you know, I don't know. I, want, I don't want to say sucks, but has underachieved or whatever you want to call it for a number of years. You know, the last time the Rangers were relevant was 2011, basically. Uh, when when David Freeze put them into submission in game six of the World Series, and they gave up not one, but two opportunities to win a World Series with two strikes. Oh, God. I, 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 I almost feel sorry for the Rangers fans that had to deal with that because I know how it feels. I know how it feels. I've been there. But uh, it's not going to work, Nick. It's just not. You, you know, you can bring in all the talent in the world, it's got to fit together. Uh, you know, Seeger has been injury prone. So, you know, I'm not completely sold on him. I like, I love Simeon. I wish he signed with the Giants. I thought he would have been a good fit. But, you know, the Rangers had obviously the, uh, the money and the uh, years that they were willing to offer for these players. Cole Calhoun is a decent player again, but are they winning players? That's what I always think about. Are they winning players? And Corey Seager, yeah, I mean, he, he, he did help his team win a World Series, uh, you know, especially he came up huge in 2020. So you could say Corey Seager's a winning player. Is, is Marcus Simeon a winning player? Yeah, maybe. Uh, is Cole Calhoun a winning player? And do they have the pitching? <laughs> Which is always the big question. I don't think they do. So uh, in a stacked division, you know, obviously the A's are going to take a huge drop this year, which we'll talk about. Uh, but I don't see the Astros taking any kind of a dip. 
And we already talked about what the Mariners are going to be this year. So is it going to work? The answer is no. Yep. And a couple other free agents forgot to mention. Nelson Cruz, really, really confusing. He signs a one-year $13 million deal to go with the Nationals. Today. Um, yeah, today, like just an hour ago. I mean, the reason this is confusing, he had offers from like the Padres and the Dodgers and like the Braves. and a Yeah, bunch because of, of the DH, teams. because of the DH. Yeah, a bunch of National League teams were in on him. And all these winning teams, he decides to go to Washington, who's tearing it down to play with Juan Soto. Like, and may get know. rid of, and may get rid of Juan Soto at some point. I yeah, know you to. know, I mean, it, it's crazy to think that you know, for Nelson Cruz being how old he is, you know, and then all these teams, forty-two. Yeah, for all these teams opening up, he could have gone anywhere, and he decides to go to the Nationals. So that's confusing. Maybe another. Maybe he's got a a, a favorite restaurant in D.C. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe he got something like that. And then another thing just happened like an hour ago. Josh Donaldson, uh, Isaiah kiner Fleffer went from the Rangers to the Twins, and uh, some Ben Rot- Rothling something, last name, weird, I don't know, know how to pronounce it, got traded to the Yankees of all teams. Now he got Josh Donaldson and Garrett Cole together. They hated each other because of sticky stuff. In exchange for Gary Sanchez, now he's, a, now he's the Twins problem, and Gio Urshela. You know, that's confusing. Clear salary dump by the Twins. Yeah, and who also got Sonny Gray for Chase Petty. Like the twins right now are in such a confusing spot. You know, they get Sonny Gray They're They want to go get a pitcher like Johnny Cueto, apparently, yeah. you know, they, they trade for Falefa. They do all this stuff. And then they trade away Donaldson and Falefa for Urshela and um, Gary gotcha. Sanchez. So, like, it's just the Twins are at a confusing spot. They have Sonny Gray now. I feel like that was interesting. Chase Petty, I would have liked him throwing 101 for you in the future. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the Twins, they open up $50 million. So, who knows? They might go sign somebody. And then, finally, of course, I'm going to try to keep this short. The New York Mets, they did a lot this offseason. Mark Canna, uh, Eduardo Escobar, Starling Marte, Adam Adovino, and the big man, Max freaking Scherzer I mean the New York Mets man the Steve Cohen tax throw that out the window the Mets are here to spend and here to win Jacob DeGrom has no restrictions Billy Epler knows what he's doing the Mets they get stronger up the middle with uh Mark uh with Starling Marte Mark Cannon will play in corner outfield Nemo and the other and uh Canna I mean they look for guys that get on base Eduardo Escobar has that power potential they're banking on these guys and you know the hitters they're all right. You know, Starling Marte, he adds this dynamic of uh, a speed center fielder that we, you know, Starling Marte and the Mets have been rumored forever, by the way, but 50 something, 49, 50 stolen bases for Starling Marte. You know, that's amazing. Oh, by the way, we have Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer, the best one, two in baseball. Oh, and by the way, we just got Chris Bassett from the A's. This Mets rotation is incredible. You know, Adam Adovino in the bullpen to right, replace Jerry's familia. Hopefully he can turn it around. And they're still looking to spend more money. I mean, the Mets, it's fine. It's it's so nice to finally be a Mets fan. We got tortured with the Will Ponds. Most of that I wasn't even alive for, but here I am, you know, 18 years old. Life's good, man. The Mets are finally doing something. I I, I wouldn't, but I, I again, and I I, I don't want to taper your enthusiasm to the point where you you know you uh, you get sad again, like you've been for the last 10 years. Uh, but I, I think that you have to understand that you you don't just patch together a team of free agents and think it's going to work right away. It's going to take some time. Uh, I think Chris Bassett, which happened, I believe, today also. Yesterday. Uh, yesterday. It was a huge signing for them or a huge a huge move for them. And they, they obviously have a great uh, working relationship with the A's because they've been able to, you know, poach away – that sad organizations, you know, the, 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 any kind of hope that they had to keep their thing going. And I'm sure that they will, you know, Matt Olson and Matt Chapman will be soon, you know, to, to fall behind, you know, come behind and be gone also. Uh, but remember, these are guys that are a bit older, you know, Max Scherzer, Starling Marte is no youngster, uh, you know, so uh, you just have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Don't get too excited because you still have the world champions in your division. 
And it's a, that's a good ball club still, you know, I mean, I, we'll see what happens with Freddie Freeman. Uh, but, you know, they have a great pitching staff. They, they obviously have confidence. They've got young, amazing ball players that, you know, stepped up in the biggest of stages. I just think that you, you have to uh, taper some of that and see where they are in May, see where they are in June, because uh, don't expect them to come out of the gates and be world beaters. And also don't expect them to go through the season, you know, completely injury free. There's going to be, you know, there, there will be injuries just like every team. And you just hope that it doesn't happen to your, your big boys. Um, when I say big boy, I mean Scherzer. So, uh, you know, good luck to you guys. You spent a lot of money. whoop de doo Yeah. I mean, the Mets, man, they had the most injuries of all of baseball last year. I mean, what can you say? But, I mean, the Braves, you know, Freddie Freeman, you know, you just mentioned him. We're now on to the portion where we talk about free agents and Are where we think available? we're going to sign. Yeah. I mean, Freddie Freeman, you know, he's the big one. Do you have, where do you think he's going to end? Yeah, I, I do think he'll end up in L.A. I, I just think uh, I think the Dodgers are just they continue to be a destination for for, you know, guys that are looking to cash in. And I think Freddie Freeman's looking to cash in. And it doesn't mean that he, he doesn't love the community that he's been in. But ultimately, you know, these guys make decisions that are best for their family and for their future. And they have to maximize that earning potential in a short amount of time. He again, he's he's probably this is probably going to be his last big contract. Um, so I, I would be surprised if it's not the Dodgers, but I also wouldn't count out the, the Giants. I you know I I I know it sounds crazy, and and people are like you know what is he talking about? But I mean they have money to spend. They still have money to spend, and they I think they. They have slow played it so that they could save up maybe for one more big offensive talent. Um, the the nice thing about the DH is that you can mix and match. Brandon Belt has been beyond injury prone for forever now and had a great season last year, but wasn't available in the postseason when we needed him. So a guy like Darren Ruff was basically, you know, giving getting the big hits. <laughs> which he did, you know, big, huge, huge home run in game five against the Dodgers. So uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Freeman ended up in San Francisco. Uh, but I think the Dodgers are probably the place where he ends up. I don't think he goes back to Atlanta, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, you know, the team's rumored in on him. Uh, the Yankees, who just got Josh Donaldson, and they have their first base craziness. The Braves have been rumored. The Giants have been rumored. The Dodgers have been rumored. A bunch of other teams. The Mets have been rumored. The Mets are rumored with just about anyone. I want to find a free agent that is not rumored with the Mets. Like, it's yeah, everybody's I'm waiting, name. I'm waiting for the Mets to go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, how much money can you spend? <laughs> Steve Cohen is the richest man in baseball. What can I say? But, yeah, I mean, I, I in, in a way, I hope. Freeman leaves the NL East because he's just a, a thorn in the Mets back. I mean, every time he's just hitting another home run going, you know, playing a series hitting 450 or something, but at the same time, I hate the Dodgers. So I want him to stay with the Braves. He's a brave man, like spent his entire career there. So like, I, I feel that for the Braves fan, you know, I feel that for a lot of teams, you know, but the, again, like you said, the Dodgers, I feel like he's most likely there lost yeah. Corey Seager, but now you got Freddie Freeman. And the universal DH, you know, that's something that's going to allow a team like the Dodgers and the Mets to play around a lot. Now onto the former giant Chris Bryant uh, utility. And I feel like his obvious fit, probably the Seattle Mariners. I don't know if, you know, you feel any different about that. Yeah, I, I he's another one that I'd like the Giants to bring back. Uh, I think, you know, he'd be a, he'd be a great fit. I think Longoria is getting older and, you know, he, he showed last year that he was he had enough durability and flexibility and to move around. He wasn't great defensively, um, but Seattle is probably the favorite for him. Uh, again, kind of, a you know, it would be a move that would really prove to the league and kind of tell the league, in other words, we're ready. You know, we, we've done it with Robbie Ray uh, uh, as far as our pitching staff. 
And now we're going to bring in a, a solidified, you know, World Series winning experience bat that is going to help with the, you know, all the young guys that they have that are coming up right now and that are already at the big league level. Um, you know, they lose Kyle Seeger, which is a hole that they have to fill. So it's a logical place. But I, I, I think that it, it may come down to, for him, what was his experience like in San Francisco? Did he enjoy it? Did he, did he, did he feel, does he feel like the Giants are um, a place that he would like to spend long-term? Because I think that while Farhan hasn't done a lot of uh, the long-term moves, I think, I think he would give Bryant four to five years because of what we saw in that short amount of time. And he was clutch, you know, he came up big in the postseason also with some big hits. So ultimately it's probably between the Mariners and the Giants, I would say. Yeah, I mean, Chris Bryant, again, I go back to experiences I have in real life. Chris Bryant, the same game Logan Webb pitch, went yard twice, go figure. You know, he, he was a thorn in the Mets back and also rumored with the Mets along with basically every other free agent. Yeah, I think the Mets, they said they don't want to add a bat. I, You know, I agree. You know, I think Seattle and the Giants are probably the final two landing spots. Let's so now move on to a couple corner outfielders, also rumored with the Giants and the Mets, Nick Castellanos and Michael Conforto. So Castellanos is probably a good fit for the Giants also. Um, but it, it really depends on Chris Bryant. I mean, it depends on what they do there. Castellanos is the kind of guy that, you know, he's a, he's, he hits the ball to all fields. Uh, you know, I, I honestly think Castellanos would be a great fit for an American league team. And I, I don't, you know, I don't know if the Yankees are targeting him, but I think he'd be a great fit in that ballpark, especially the way he hits the ball to right field. Uh, so if I were the Yankees, I'd be calling for him definitely. And I think Conforto would be a great fit with the Yankees also. I, I, I really do. And I, and I don't know if they, you know, it'd be an easy transition for him being in New York. Uh, but you tell me, Nick, you're a Conforto guy. You you have been for quite a bit of time. Where where do you think he's going to end up? Conforto. Um, unfortunately, I see a team like the Phillies who are lacking a corner outfield spot. You know, I feel like a team like them could go in. I feel like a team, you know, like the Mariners, actually. I feel like they could be in a play for a guy like Conforto. Maybe even the Rangers, you know, they, they got more money to spend. You know, Conforto is one of those players where he had a down year. He's not going to go to a team that's a powerhouse. I feel like he's going to look to rebuild his value on a shorter term deal, maybe two to three years, maybe even a one year deal. Try, like I said, try and rebuild his value, go hit the market at his peak. But I definitely see the Phillies. He's a big team rumored. And, you know, I had to think, you know, if they're actually interested, he ought to be, you know, probably the favorite for them. And then another one, rumored with the Giants, of course, and the Mets, you know, Carlos Correa. And worth mentioning that he got a new agency. So if he signed a multiple multi-year deal, most of that money will be going to his old agency. If he signs a one-year deal next offseason, that money can go to Scott Boris, his new agent. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think the Tigers are the favorite here. I really do. I, I just think that they you know, logically for them. And, and, and again, it may not be a long-term deal. And, and I, I don't know exactly how, how much legitimacy there is to the idea that his agency ended and he doesn't want to sign a long, you know, I don't know. You know, there, there's a lot, a lot of things get written. They're not always true. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm almost positive that the Tigers are going to uh, make a real run at, at Mr. Correa. I think that they are uh, in a position again right now, especially with a guy that we didn't mention, Spencer Torkelson. You know, he is going to be legit. This this guy, you know, he's he, we're look. You're looking at a 40 home run, you know, 120 RBI, you know, legitimate first baseman. So, you know, they they've built up their um, not only their starting rotation but their lineup. They've gone younger and they're almost ready to compete. They were really competitive last year. You know, even though they weren't, a lot of people didn't think they were even close to ready, especially how many games they lost the year before and the year before that. So uh, I think Correa ends up in Detroit. 
you know, a great double play partner with Baez and, you know, a team that really could um, cause some trouble in the American League. Yeah, I mean, Correa, man, it, it'll be interesting to see where he goes. You know, I know the Tigers, you know, they were strong early favorites and then they dropped off. They have the A.J. Hinch connection. I know yeah. the Yankees, they were a player. They've kind of fallen off now they got Josh Donaldson. The Astros, their name's gotten re-put in the mix. I know the Angels, the Cubs are a team, you know, in on Correa. The Giants have been said to be in on Correa. I mean, there's a lot of teams. I think that the Astros and Tigers are definitely probably the top two for me right now. But, you know, it'll be interesting. You know, just like Conforto, there's a lot of possibilities because I think Correa is going to look for a short-term deal. I think that, you know, because of this, you know, I, I don't feel like his value right now is currently with long term, especially with his past injury issues. I feel like he can go out there, play 162 games and get, and get a longer term deal because he'll be like, oh, yeah, I can stay healthy for an entire year. And, and, and don't rule out him coming back to Houston on a one or two year deal. That's another option. And, and we've seen that in the past with guys that are not quite ready to go out and test the market yet or, or for whatever reason. They are more more often than not, they resign with their team uh, for that short term deal because it's more it's easier for them. It's more convenient. They already know the system. You know, it's not like the Astros are going anywhere as far as their, you know, competitiveness. They still are. You know, they still have Altuve. They still have Bregman. They you know, they they have some incredible young talent that, is you know, is, is there. They they have Verlander coming back. You know, they they still have Zach Grinky. So they're they're in a position where, you know, they can still compete at a high level. And if Correa comes back, they're probably still the favorite in the AL West. So if if he's gonna take a short term deal, I think he goes back to Houston. But if he but if Detroit is still in the mix, which I know they've been we've heard that they may not be, but if they are still in the mix. Or if a sleeper team like the Giants come out and say, you know what, we, we, we think that you can really take us over the top. You can be the difference for us. You know, we, we won 107 games last year. Uh, the Dodgers were on our ass all year long. They will continue to be there. Uh, and San Diego's not just going to go away either this year. You know, they, they bring in Bob Melvin and, and they still have all the talent in the world and people forget about San Diego. They've got tons of talent and they've got players. They've got guys coming back in their pitching staff. So, you know, we'll talk about them on Thursday. So I, I, I think it's, if it's short term, it's the Astros. If it's long term, you know, it could be a sleeper team. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it, it'll be interesting to see the, the uh, Astros have a couple guys you know, Bregman, uh, Altuve, Brantley, Verlander's on a two-year pack. I think McCullers has three years left. So they have these guys that have a couple years left. You know, maybe they look, bring them back on a short-term deal, push all the chips in and look for this one, you know, two final runs for, before looking back and be like, those good years are behind us. Finally, the last, you know, pretty big notable free agent uh, to talk about, Trevor Story, you know. He he's also someone rumored with the Giants. Yeah, and I, I don't see him as a fit with the Giants. I, I don't. I, I don't think that he is the kind of if they are gonna go out and make a splash, uh, I don't think he's worth the not only the years that he's looking for, and unless unless they can work out a two-year deal. Uh, you know, the Giants still have Brandon Crawford and you know, obviously got re-signed. I don't I don't know if you mentioned that, you know, but that was an extension last year. So, yeah, it was during the season. So we didn't need to mention it, but Brandon Crawford's coming back. Um, you know, so I don't know if they're really a fit. I, I see. And, and a lot of times it's like, I literally wake up in the middle of the night, like, and envision a guy in a uniform. I see Trevor story with the Yankees and I don't know why <laughs> I, I just, you know, it's almost like I, maybe it's because of LeMahieu and how he ended up as a Yankee. Uh, but I, I think Story would be a good fit there. I think he's the kind of he's the kind of guy that can fit in. He looks like he's sort of a um, a big team kind of guy. Probably has wanted out of Colorado for years now. So 
in my estimation, I see him ending up with the Yankees, probably a shorter term deal. Uh, but he's definitely not coming back to the Rockies. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, Trevor's story, I feel it's like, feel like is like also a player like Michael Conforto, you know, he and Conforto are both on this, this area. They got the qualifying offer. They both are like good players. They have the potential, they have the capability and they're kind of floating in no man's land, you know, all the short stops, you know, they're kind of, you know, the, their holes are all, you know, on the team, you know, the, everyone's filled, you know, the good teams, you know, I know the Yankees were a big suitor for him and they just went and got Josh Donaldson. Yeah. So, and then Isaiah kind of Falefa and then they, they, and the Yankees apparently view Falefa as their uh, shortstop before getting Anthony Volk with their top prospect up to the majors or Oswald Peraza. So, I mean, Trevor story, again, one of those people floating in no man's land team. I'd like to mention too, potentially if they want, like I said, they have the money to spend. I feel like if he's willing to play third base, the Texas Rangers are a sneaky yeah. team. I can see Trevor Story in a Rangers uniform. I feel like he's just he he's a Texas player to me. I don't know why. I just have that feeling. And you yeah, know. and he'd be a, he'd be a good fit, um, especially with the guys that they brought in. They have they have a spot for him. And uh, if they get Trevor Story, then you really have to start, you know thinking about man that lineup is going to be tough and and if they can stay healthy i know I'll, i know i bad mouthed them but if the texas rangers can stay healthy they're gonna score runs <laughs> and lots of them they scored runs last year even though they were a losing team so uh that ballpark is a bandbox, and uh you know i i could see them scoring a lot of runs and being scary are they going to win a division no can they get to the playoffs hell yeah because of the 12 teams yeah, for sure. I mean, the Rangers, you know, if they, they're, they're they're like a couple moves away. And if they, you know, push the right buttons right now, get some of these guys. And then keep in mind, there's also a bunch of guys we didn't mention. Like, for example, we got, you know, World Series uh, or postseason MVP, Eddie Rosario. World oh. Series MVP, Jorge Soler. You got Jock Peterson, the Braves, oh. the Braves trio of outfielders. You know, you got players uh, like uh, Zach Granke still available. You know, you have all these solid names that are just still floating out. You know, Andrew McCutcheon, he's a corner outfielder. Colin McHugh had like an under two ERA with the Rays last year. He's still a free agent. I would love for the Mets to sign him. Ken Lee Jansen. You know, there's, there's these guys that are out there just that, that are solid, serviceable and players. And it's all going to happen quickly. Just guys, I, I want all of you out there to realize it's all going to happen quickly because spring training is starting, <laughs> you know, next week. And yeah, there might be guys that wait a few weeks and, you know, sign closer to beginning of April. But I mean, all of these guys are going to be signing in the next two to three weeks, you know, probably more like two to two weeks. So this is uh, this is ongoing. This is going to be extremely exciting. It's great for the game, uh, and it's it can't hurt with with the publicity of a game that took a little bit of a I don't know if they really took a, a shot to the fan base with this strike. That's something that we didn't talk about. Is what's the impact going to be on the people that were on the fence? They didn't lose any games, you know. There's March Madness is coming up you know, this week. So people aren't even thinking really about baseball yet anyway, uh, you know, and that's kind of how it's always been. So, and do people, and the other thing is, do people really like spring training? <laughs> do they really like four five, six weeks of spring training? Uh, you're not gonna have to have that this week, this year, you get about three weeks of spring training and then, yeah. the, then the season starts. Yeah, I mean, spring training, I feel like that's be a crazy new thing. It's abbreviated. It's short. You know, another player I just remember off the top of my head, Kyle Schwarber is still a free agent. He's oh, an he impact would, bat. He would, he would be a great fit on so many teams. I mean, there's these guys that are going to be looking for teams. And within the next, I think, probably week, these guys are going to be f flying off the board. So, you know, look for your favorite team. You know, if they got a spot, they can add a impact player like Albert Pujols, who will hopefully find a team for the next couple of years, Universal DH, go to the Pirates and get 700 home runs, man. you got and, this. And, and we want all of you guys, all of our followers, let us know who you think is going to end up where, you know, put it in the comment section and let's have a conversation about it. And 
see, you know, challenge each other and see who's right and who's wrong. I'm sure Nick will be wrong as usual. Yeah. So between here and Thursday, you know, if, if either of us gets uh, one of these predictions, correct, you know, you best believe it. We're going to be bragging in Thursday's show. So make sure to come back to the show Thursday. Um, this will be, uh, wrap up our show for today. You know, thank you all so much for watching. Do you have anything else to say? Just again, happy to be back. We're, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be more active this year. We're going to give you guys more content. Uh, let us know uh, if there's something that you'd like specifically to talk about, or if there's if any if any of you want to join us, you know, feel free to come on and uh, give us your take uh, as we roll roll along on the three two pitch this year. Should be a great season, uh, and I can't wait to give you guys my World Series pick. Oh my God, I cannot wait! You guys are going to be shocked. Yep. So. You have to catch that in the next episode of the 3-2 Pitch. And signing off for now, Nick and Drew, we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.